In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basic structures of the heart. This is a sheep heart. This is an anterior view of the sheep heart. Some of the major structures we can see are right auricle or right appendage, which is the right atrium underneath, left auricle or left appendage, pulmonary artery, aorta, and brachiocephalic artery that branches off of the aorta. Also on the anterior surface, we see this large diagonal interventricular septum dividing right ventricle and left ventricle. The base of the left ventricle is known as the apex of the heart. This is where we get the point of maximum intensity near the left nipple. The posterior view of the heart, we kind of get this horizontal groove or coronary sinus, and then just a mess of blood vessels that have been cut off uh, that go into the atriums, which I'll discuss later. Anterior structure. Right ventricle. Left ventricle. Left atrium, which is inside the left appendage or auricle, which is the ear flap. Right atrium, which is inside that right auricle or ear flap. And another major landmark on my anterior surface is the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery is the most anterior blood vessel that can be seen. Another major structure that can be found on the surface of the heart are the coronary arteries that feed the heart muscle or myocardium itself. It's often these blood vessels that become blocked and which result in a heart attack. There's one major coronary artery. The coronary arteries actually branch off the base of the aorta, which cannot be seen from this view here. Here is another view of a different sheep heart. Some of the major structures include the right appendage, the right ventricle, the interventricular groove, and left ventricle. This heart has been cut on a frontal plane, which shows some of the major internal structures. One thing you have to understand is every heart will appear different when cut on a different, slightly different plane. So one of the key distinctions on the internal structures is denoting between right ventricle and left ventricle. The landmark that can be used is the thick myocardium that surrounds the left ventricle. Now because this has been cut in half and opened like a book or a dollhouse, this left ventricle also connects to this left ventricle on this half. The right ventricle has a much thinner myocardium. So here we see the right ventricle chamber surrounded by its right ventricle myocardium. This also is the same chamber, right ventricle, connected to this myocardium. Using only this half, now that we've designated right ventricle and left ventricle, above the ventricles are the atrium. Atrium are th receiving chambers, so are relatively thin-walled. Between an atrium and a ventricle is always an atrioventricular valve. On the right side of the heart, this AV or atrioventricular valve is known as the tricuspid. Atrioventricular valves can also easily be found 
because they are attached to heart strings or chordae tendinae that prevent the valves from flipping back up into the atrium. In this segment, I will do my best to go through our circulatory pathway, starting with the right atrium. Blood flows into the right atrium by means of the vena cava. It will then pass the atrioventricular tricuspid. Here we can see heart strings attached to that valve. Blood then flows down into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, which is also on this side of the heart, blood will move up and out the pulmonary artery, which is one of the most anterior blood vessels on the surface of the heart. Blood will travel to the lungs to get oxygenated, and we return to the left atrium by means of pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins are often cut off on the back side of the heart. Here's the left atrium. And here we can see a nice view of the left atrium. Blood enters the left atrium, passes the second atrioventricular valve, which is the bicuspid. Notice the heart strings attached to the bicuspid. Blood then flows down into the left ventricle. I will move to this side of the heart because now we can see blood will get pumped out of the left ventricle, moving past the semilunar valves, the aortic semilunar valves. These are very thin half moon or cup like valves that allow blood to move up and out, but if blood moves back towards the ventricle, it fills in those semilunars, closing those shut. Here we can see the aorta that has been cut open. Branching off the aorta is a brachiocephalic artery that will carry blood to the head and to the arms. After blood goes to the head and the rest of the body, it will return back to the right atrium by the vena cava past the tricuspid, into the right ventricle, out through the pulmonary artery, back to the left atrium, past the bicuspid atrioventricular, down into the left ventricle, and then up and out, past the aortic semilunars, through the aorta. Right atrium. right ventricle, tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart, left atrium, left ventricle, cuspid valve on the left side of the heart, also known as the mitral valve. Here's the aorta. And at the base of the aorta, if we move this dissected aorta to the side, we can see the very thin but strong aortic valves. Attached to the heart strings are what are called papillary muscles. Here we can see thick myocardium surrounding the left ventricle. It is also on this side because this heart has been cut in two and opened like a book. Heart strings are known as chordae tendinae and always attached to atrioventricular valves. This last segment I will talk about the major arteries on the top of the heart. The pulmonary artery is always the most anterior major blood vessel. 
From the top though, it looks like a lot of these blood vessels are connected. The pulmonary is mostly anterior and behind that is the very thick and strong aorta. There is an offshoot to the aorta, which is called the brachiocephalic, which is slightly varied in the sheep heart compared to a human heart. Right? This is a continuous connection between the aorta and the brachiocephalic. Moving in to the right atrium would be the superior vena cava, which will also connect to the inferior vena cava, which has been cut off on this heart. From the posterior view, pulmonary veins, which we can see very small remnants of here, will feed into the left atrium. From the front, pulmonary artery, aorta, brachiocephalic, entering into the right atrium, superior vena cava, which connects to the inferior vena cava, and entering into the left atrium, cut off pulmonary veins.